over half of my life, <laughs> I've thought of Chris Moyles every time I do a poo. Everybody is very excited about our next guest. Very excited. Very, ever, overly excited, I yeah, would yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's going to go well. As we say, good morning to James A. Castor. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Lovely Welcome to, see to you. the Chris Moyle Show. Thank you so much. It's your first time on the Chris Moyle Show. It's huge. Huge for me. Is it, though? It is. Is Look, it? Look, I, I, I was talking to James beforehand, and, and, he, and um, I... Uh, look, oh, I'm going to say it now. I'm actually going to say it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing the podcast that I do, which is the main thing that keeps my lights on, if it wasn't for Chris Miles. That is, that is a that is a true thing. Really? When In I was when I was 13, oh, Chris, a long time actually ago. 14. I was. It was 1999. Yeah. Uh, a house flooded because of a cracked ball cock, which may or may not have been Susie Quattro's fault, and I can't prove that. <laughs> right. Um, we had to move into a smaller house that didn't have a television, so I started listening to the radio every day. I listened to you every time I got home from school, and because you mainly did banter with everyone in the studio and not music, mm -hmm. I would. I really loved it. Started recording little uh, on a. I had a little tape player at home, and me and my brother and sister would uh, do our own version of the Chris Miles show. Wow! And record that. And now, were, when you, I, when were I, you the Chris Miles on that? Yeah, I was the one. I was the ringleader. Yeah. Where are those tapes? Uh, I I dread to think where those <laughs> tapes are now because it's uh it's, it's me trying to be funny at fourteen. And uh, there's still times now when I'm doing the off-menu podcast with Ed where I think, I can't believe I get to be Chris Moyles. <laughs> I can't believe <laughs> this is so it. Cool. So, um, yeah, oh. it's, it's it actually, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to be here. Um, it's, it's quite surreal. Wow. Well. What a lovely thing. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I helped. I think of Chris every time I do a poo. <laughs> oh, oh, do you? Now, that yeah. is the ultimate compliment. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you used to, uh, on a couple of occasions, you and the, and the, the crew on that show uh, went off on a tangent about uh, the dilemma of going for a poo at a friend's house mm. and uh, Chris's contribution to the riff would always be um, a, you would say uh, have a, put, put down some toilet paper to deaden the, the, the sound that's right that's and uh, I was 14 so this was a new concept to me <laughs> You know, you don't do that when you're seven, do you? Put the toilet paper Check down to dead and so. Right. So this was new, and I was like, that's a good idea, actually, because I'm 14 years old. I'm scared of going for poos in people's houses. So I started doing it because Chris suggested it. <laughs> and and so every time I put toilet paper down to dead in the sound, I think of Chris. That's Thank every you. time I do a poo. I'm 39 now. I was 14. <laughs> Over half of my life, I thought of Chris Moyles every time I do a poo. Oh, Get it! Oh, it's lovely. It's beautiful. You're yes. like a life coach in a way. Yeah. yeah. But in a weird twist of, of life, mm. um, Off Menu has been running... 2018 you started? Yeah, we did. So it's been running for like for six or seven yeah, years. Mad, it? And not once have I been asked to be a guest oh. on it. So it's clear that no. as much as you love me, Ed clearly has the opposite feeling. Ed hates your guts, yeah, he, I think he does. <laughs> Ed, Ed is a, I mean, he's a hater and I don't pay attention to him. No. If I was you, none of us do. I yeah. don't. I don't know. I don't know what Ed's problem with me is. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's anyone who works in this building. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't including like it. himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hates them. He hates them. Morning, everyone. Ed. I um, I've, I've, I, I did a bit of research on you myself before Great. you came in today. I just wanted to see what my angle could be with you today. Sure. Yeah. And, and my angle, ironically, has mm. turned into you have done a lot of interviews recently. Like, yeah. A lot. Yeah, yeah. To the point where... Now, I also found an interview with you with you that you did with Graham Norton a few years ago where you started lying in interviews. <laughs> <laughs> so because I knew that, when I was watching all the other interviews that you were doing, <laughs> I started playing a game of, I, I wonder if this is... If he's, if he's just playing with the person. <laughs> so now I have to ask... Did you really listen to the show? I don't know. Now. I don't know who you are, mate. <laughs> See, at this point in my career, that's what I'm used to. Yeah, yeah. It's people going in and going, which one's Chris? It's yeah. you, is it? Okay, nice yeah. to meet you. Nah, the, the poo thing is too specific. Yeah. True. Yeah. You know, you know that was you who said that. It also, it also, if you put a bit of paper down, it also helps with the cleanliness of, of the situation afterwards. Yeah. It really does. Or you go with a flush. You know, I said. Oh no, I always flush it. Yeah, yeah. Go you with don't just a put monster. Paper, yeah. Flush yeah. twice. Go with the flush. Yeah, but sometimes you ain't got time for that. You have to time also, it right. Flush you twice. I mean, yeah. oh, they're going to hear that. 
Yeah. And they're going to go, oh man, <laughs> what's so, going on in there? They, would, they won't stop flushing. Get yeah. the plunger. Yeah. Actually, yeah. We've got a double flush around for dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you've got to come up with an excuse when you come out and why you flushed it twice. Oh yeah, you're right. It just went off on its own. Yeah. <laughs> it just went off on its own. So you've, yeah, you've done a lot of interviews. I have, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm like, I thought, I, I, I've got to make this one different. I've got mm-hmm. to somehow, and then I saw in one of them, you, you've been in, so when did you get back from New York? York. A couple of weeks ago. But, and how long were you there? Uh, I was in America for a month, New York for two weeks. Wow. Mm. In New York, just chilling out? just or... uh, Doing interviews and yeah. like, you know, whatever, and, you know, little bits of work stuff, but I wasn't doing stand-up, so that was, mm. right. that was easier. Do you like it there? Uh, yeah, I do like it. I like, I, like, I like the food. I like getting <laughs> eaten there. And I like, uh, you know, I like eating banana puddings all the time in New York. Go to Magnolia Bakery, get a banana pudding, which is basically a tub of cream oh, with yeah, some right. bananas in. Um, yeah, that's my favourite thing to do. But look at you. There's nothing on you, with the greatest of respect. Thing? No, hey, I'd I, I love to hear that. Because <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm nearly 40. And uh, I like to hear that there's nothing on me for the listener. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if, yeah. I live, if I was living in New York for a couple of weeks next to a bakery like that, then forget mm. it. I, I'd need sure. two seats on the plane on the way back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't look the same coming back as right. when I, 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 this, these two weeks have just been me on a treadmill because <laughs> I know I had the Chris Miles show coming up and you film it these days. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every, everything's yeah, strange now. It's changed now, isn't it? Shame, isn't it? It's how, changed. How are you feeling about your birthday in, in January? Are you bothered or not? I don't. I think I am a little bit. You know, it's mm. weird, isn't it? Don't like, they? like I think, I think you know, after the pandemic, we were all suddenly two years older. Yeah. And we um, were like, what happened there? Yeah. And so this is the first birthday where I've been like, this feels a bit early. This yeah. shouldn't be happening now. Um, what, 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 what should I do for it? I, don't, I actually haven't planned anything yet, and don't know what it's I should pressure, do. It's pressure, isn't it? Yeah. Is that because you don't want to celebrate? It I think so. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't celebrate Christmas if everyone didn't make me. <laughs> you're, you're not a fan. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it. Christmas. That's nice when you're a kid. That's awesome. Fine. Yeah. Has it lost its mag- sort of lost its magic for Just you? Just a bit. Yeah. I think adults who still find it magical are weird. <laughs> <laughs> Why but would you, they still find it magical? Do you not like a tree? Do you not like a Christmas tree? With the... I'm not, I don't. I, I've ne- I, to be honest, I've never understood the tree, even as a kid. <laughs> right. I've never understood. That. I think the Christmas tree song that Oh Christmas Tree song is the most boring one <laughs> I don't get why we have to sing that all the other ones are so much more fun Santa Claus is coming to town and that's stuff that's, that's yeah, jolly yeah. Yeah, and yeah. fun Oh Christmas Tree Oh Christmas Tree is just like I've never found the branches graceful no <laughs> at all so I've just never got that and hanging the stuff up on the tree that's not something that excites me it's a dull tune as well isn't it it's a right? dull tune yeah. that is the most boring person at Christmas who wrote that <laughs> I've got a song I'm going to sing it for you so at your home right now yeah. in your big mansion yeah, where yeah, you yeah. with your driveway big and all mansion, of that big driveway <laughs> any decorations up no way. No. <laughs> no way, man. No. Actually, there's a reef on the door, and I, I and, and that, that was there when I got back from New York. I was like, she's a sneaky one. <laughs> <laughs> ah. I, uh, that wasn't there when I left, and I can't rip it down now because I've been it. away for a while. I need to get, <laughs> I need to have some nice, t- t- you know, nice time together now. I can't start it by nice. walking in holding a torn apart reef, <laughs> going like, nice try. <laughs> <laughs> but you've, you're, you've got cats. I've got four cats. So, but wow. I and you love your cats. I love them so much. So, will they get Christmas presents? No, I don't think so. That's one of the best things about having cats and not kids. They don't know it's Christmas. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, that that's that true, song, so. do they know it's Christmas? <laughs> to me, it's about my cat. So the answer is no, and it's a good job. <laughs> see now, I see. I my I have well, I have one cat now. We did have two cats, but I've oh. got one cat now, and it's it's my girlfriend badgered me into getting these cats. Yes, yeah. and our home now looks like pets at home mm. yeah. and there will be Christmas presents for, there will be. for, for Leia for the cat yeah. <sighs> have you like all year been like listening on the cats and what they want making a note of it well, well they'd probably like that for Christmas what? actually that would surprise them <laughs> see they <laughs> like the simplest of things because even though we have loads of toys and things and paraphernalia we've got a cat tree do you have a cat tree got yeah a- yeah I've got a cat tree yeah. much better than a Christmas tree uh, well, one point if, I'm, if I'm ranking the trees Chris <laughs> <laughs> Christmas trees at the bottom and cat tree is very near the top there you are which is where it's like it's six foot tall it's, like, it's, it's, it's taller than me yeah. isn't it it's yeah gotta be gigantic yeah. they like being up high is that right well, cats like being up high yeah they do big time away from me 
Is that what, what it is? But I find with Leia, yeah. a couple of tinfoil balls, and she's the happiest that, cat yeah, in the yeah. world. Exactly. But it doesn't stop Tiff literally buying everything. Yeah. Yeah. That is available. Yeah. Uh, often, like I find that the more money you spend on a cat toy, the less likely they are to play with it. They're not yeah. going to do it. They're going to play with the box. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've absolutely wasted your time. Yeah. But the the, the the playing with tinfoil balls and stuff that that's a problem because now my girlfriend when she's ever when she's finished with something that should go in the bin yeah. that just goes on the floor <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, I, she, I, she drops that and, and they'll, they'll be playing with that for a while and I'm like oh good there's a uh, not rinsed out baked bean tin being spun around the living room <laughs> <laughs> and but it's boxes for us yeah boxes because it's everything's being delivered at the moment yeah and every box and obviously because they're so hot at Amazon if you order I don't know a pen it comes in a big yeah. box yeah they're good like that and then that's it yeah, so it's got, uh, Leia's got a new box to play in yeah. or ignore that they yeah. just sits mm. in the room for a few days I have to be I, I, I like I like it when they love their boxes and I love like uh, building little like gyms for them <laughs> I'm, I'm making a huge thing out of all the boxes I'm really proud of myself I put blankets over them and stuff and all the cats are playing with it but I am always the one who has to decide when to retire the box right because my partner feels bad you know it's like throwing away their yeah. favourite toy yeah. and uh, every time I do it they couldn't care less. They don't. They don't know. It's, they don't sit there going, "Where's the, where's, where's the box? Come? Where's, where's the playground? Come? Oh, we like that mm. box. That's a shame." They don't care. They just no. like, all right, they just keep on playing. It, it's, it's okay. So, do anyone listening? Just throw the boxes away. <laughs> <laughs> they do, won't mind. Do they have tunnels? They have tunnels on this. I might make some tunnels for them, especially if you utilize a radiator on the box. So, uh, the oh, sofa. Yeah. Uh, is like in front of the radiator yes. yeah. Yeah. and it's lower than the radiator yeah. in, and so I can tuck the blanket in mm. behind the radiator and then hook it over the sofa so it makes a tunnel they love going for the warm tunnel <laughs> it's, especially this time of year it's their favourite thing to do I'm very proud of myself that I've done that and, I, and, and usually if you're clever the tunnel leads to a box oh, <laughs> they're having the best life they're, they're having they? the best life ever they don't yeah. know how good their lives are yeah, yeah. I'm starting to realise that this that, that this is the interview where he's not telling any lies this is all real oh, oh this, this is, is uh, yeah, yeah this is yeah, all yeah, yeah. No, hey fact is stranger than fiction guys <laughs> was making up text in if you're texting your facts that are stranger than fiction do, 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 do listeners allowed to um, initiate oh, yeah. texting oh, yeah. 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 texting your facts that are stranger than fiction it's not jail <laughs> Radio. They can text this. Access to the text. Hashtag fact stranger than fiction. <laughs> James Acaster's Heckler's Welcome, which he toured earlier this year, which Dominic went to. I did go to. A few of the people from our I show did. went to. It was to. great. I bought the vinyl as well. I Thanks bought, for buying the vinyl. vinyl. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I love it's that. on vinyl? Yeah. yeah. It's a different show, the vinyl one, it's to a this one. one, wasn't it? It's a different gig, yeah. It's a different gig on the tour. Yeah. I did kept me on, on vinyl, and uh, this is Northampton is the is the special. Yeah. And how can I watch this special? James, it's on Sky. Sky, so is, uh, is that now TV and stuff I've as well? Got, I don't yeah, know how things work. Yeah, I've got Sky, yeah. Oh, and look, and there's Party Gator. Party Gator's there having yeah. a good time every now and again. Don't bother to explain that. See, now, weirdly, on my notes, I've not written many notes on top of my notes, mm -hmm. but I've written Party Gator, yeah, yeah, to ask is Party Gator still around? And clearly, the answer is yes, yeah, absolutely, still Which around. Lovely, popped up in the special. Um, the, uh, something else. So, yeah, so that's available to watch on Sky yeah. uh, and the streaming service now. Yes. Yeah, well done. And if you're in America, uh, HBO Max, I guess. Yes. Is that it what is. it is? Oh, it's HBO Max. It is. So there you are. Um, the podcast is the juggernaut oh. of the podcast, which has been going now for 19 years. It's incredible. I inspired him to do it. Yes. I've never once been asked to, <laughs> to be a guest on it because Ed never Gamble will. hates me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is fine. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of stand up. Yeah. What did you make of Dominic's stand-up? Yeah, you showed me. Uh, I, I think it was, was that did, your first gig. Did you? Did you? Have you oh, seen yeah, it? Oh yeah, sorry, I we showed it. it to James before oh, last show. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why did you do that then? I watched it before coming in. <laughs> did you? Yes. Is it your first ever gig? Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Really? Right. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant. You've, you've, you've never done it before. Never done it before. And uh, I, I wouldn't have thought you hadn't done it before. Really? Yeah. But I wore a wig. Yeah, that was really funny. Right. <laughs> you, you, you kept t tugging the wig all the time. Yes, that's a really you. funny thing to do. Right. I think that was genuinely just nerves. Yes, I think but that like, that's, that's where a lot of comedy comes from anyway. Right, true. Uh, true. So you kept on tugging the wig. That was funny. Yeah. Um, like, you seemed more at ease than most people would be for their first ever gig. Right. As well. You had actual material. 
Uh, and uh, it was funny when you slapped your heel and then you did it again later. Didn't mean to do that. Like, to, yeah, to I, I, I know you didn't mean to do it. You made that abundantly clear when you, when you, when you said afterwards. I don't know why I did that. But, uh, uh, yeah, I thought, I thought it was great. And oh. also, those, those shows, those gong shows, uh, where you could get gonged off at any minute, They're pretty brutal. are absolutely brutal. Yeah. Most yeah. professional... Yeah, there's a reason why... You know, actual, like, M- McIntyre's not going to those because he's like, that would hurt my feelings, I don't want to go. Like, <laughs> professional comics don't want to do that. Yeah. New comics have to do it, and they're the hardest gigs. Yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, it's absolutely terrifying doing stand-up, let alone yeah. when you haven't done it before, getting on in the gong show situation. So, uh, yeah, abs- full respect Thank for that. Thank you so much, mate. There I you go. That. That's, that's awesome. Nice. awesome. Nice. And crazy indeed, though. I was so nervous beforehand. I yes. Say way more and you, than you I thought. you don't I'd get be. nervous that Not easily, really. Do it's but, terrifying. Um, it's it is absolutely terrifying. And you had a heckler. You did? A heckler. You had a heckler, yeah. And you dealt with the heckler really yeah, well. Did. Yeah, what? Was that I, what that, I basically that was, said? I didn't understand. I didn't hear what he said at all. He just shouted. I, but volume. I genuinely thought what a good comeback for a heckle is just to very nicely, with a big smile, say, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> I, 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 sh- I wish I'd started doing that years ago. <laughs> just as this very nicely to them going, I don't know what you said. I'm sorry. Yeah. See, and that's a lovely compliment from a man whose special is called Heckler's Welcome. Absolutely. And he's like, that's, yeah. that's a, I like the reply to the heckler. Yes. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Because, James has, like, obviously Absolutely. been heckled quite a few times. Yeah. Quite a few times. Did not deal with it very well for the the vast, you know, majority of my career so far. Yeah. And then I'll see you nail it gig one. <laughs> ah. I He's, um, so, the, the, the rules... Thank of, you so much, James. Of, of the it. King Gong show, you've got five minutes. Yeah. And if you get three red cards, you get gonged off, you're off, okay? Yeah. And he did five minutes. Now, we'd said to him beforehand, mm. what if you get through to the final? Mm. And he said, I genuinely don't think I will, so I'm not going to prepare no, anything. That was completely generous. He got through to yeah. the final, yeah. and he had to do an extra minute, and his minute was, and I think you will appreciate this, yeah. it, and trust me, it sounds a lot funnier than it was. Yeah. You're very okay. Because he didn't have anything, he danced for one minute to Frankie Goes to Hollywood's Welcome to the Pleasure Dome, and when his time was Twelve up, minutes. he said, please don't vote for me, I don't deserve to win. Good night. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That is funny. Well, I mean, Trey, it's a beautiful piece of work. It's 13 and a half minutes long. I didn't do the full 13. That is wow. good. I, I entered one gong show as a new comic. Did you? Uh, it was in Cambridge. It was called uh, Beat the Boot. There was a giant, um, like, stiletto platform boot that was the size of a child that was <laughs> above the stage horizontally. And if you got booted off, you got three red cards, yeah. uh, it would be winched down as if it was kicking you off the stage. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> and uh, I'd, really I'd watch home. them, th- and, and the people with the cards were got mm. power crazy, and they right. were just carding people yeah. off who were actually yeah. quite good. And I was yeah. like, oh. and then before, so Rufus Hound, yes. um, shout out Rufus Hound, was a comparing it, because he's a professional comic, and we were all new acts. He got my name wrong. So I was told I was on sixth. Third into the thing, he says, uh, James Lancaster. James oh, Lancaster. Right. Uh, please welcome James Lancaster to the stage. I was like, well, that's not me. Yeah, like, what a, <laughs> well, that's, there, that's there, weird. Isn't there, it? there are 20 young people here going on. I don't know any of their names. I'm assuming that's James Lancaster. <laughs> I've been told I'm on sick. This is third. Says it for ages. Eventually, I go, does it say James A. Caster? He looks at it again and says, yes. Okay. Okay. It does say James A. Caster. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, if your name was James A. Caster and you heard James Lancaster, wouldn't you think this is probably me? Oh, so this no. guy's probably going to be rubbish. Oh. R- 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 Rufus Hound won't remember that. <laughs> he's a, I've, I've met him since. He's a nice man. I never brought it up. <laughs> but all that to say, oh. I went on. <laughs> they barely clapped me. As soon as I started talking, because of that, mm. someone put up their card and then I looked at the other two people with cards and I said, you're a, and then I said, a word that I can't repeat on the radio. <laughs> then they put their card up. I said, so are you. And he put his card up and that was that was the end of my gong show. Go, wow. That yeah, was the end of it. Oh, you got booted off, but in style with in grace. Style. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> very quickly, before we wrap things up, um, I... I saw you do something, and I think it was just off the cuff. I don't know if you practiced it at home. And I want to ask you, uh, will we ever see in any future specials your impression of Lynn from Alan Partridge? Oh. <laughs> I did that on Joe Lysett's show when I, went, when I went to yeah, with Travel Man. Um, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I should uh, put it in again. I liked that would be it. quite good. Um, I have met Felicity Montague. She's a lovely person. Mm. She's amazing. Um, so, like, uh, maybe I could just get her. I could contact her again 
and offer her just come on in my show and just and, and we, we could do a comparison a side off. by side. A Linoff. Yeah, yeah, lin off each other. It's a lovely. It's very visual, right. more, more than anything else. Yeah, it is very visual. You have to make your mouth really tight, and it was impromptu, by the way. I, well, I can tell. Joe jo, jo was doing an Alan Partridge impression, <laughs> which I was not prepared for, and I had to run with it. We were, we were outside, I think we were, we were in the Basque country. <laughs> it was uh, where no, not many people were appreciating the impressions, actually, who were walking past us. Well, I, I think Lynch should make a return. Oh, yeah. Oh, Just such a great character. Well, I mean, one of the best comedy characters yeah. ever. I mean, Alan Partridge, obviously, is mm. one of the best comedy characters ever, but within that show... Uh, so many iconic I mean it's, it's so such good. an amazing show yeah I, I was in the audience for the I'm just a fan Alan I know so, yeah. the best yeah which I, I, yeah. I, I treasure just being Jed there. was it is, so, yeah is I feel as though I yeah, went yeah. to yeah. see something being made which is and, and wow. being a classic and I yeah. was like oh I love it the whole thing oh um, Heckler's Welcome is on Sky Comedy you can watch it on Sky you can watch it on Now um also, as well, is Off Menu, that amazing podcast. I've never listened to it because they don't <laughs> want me on it, just to remind you. Um, you only listen to stuff that you're wanted on. Yeah. <laughs> wow. At this point in my career, I don't want to run the risk of them not liking me, so I only go if they like me. Yeah. And also Perfect Sounds as well. And also yes, as well, yes. can I just say, I've, having never met you before, yeah. the joy that I had watching you in Ghostbusters, by the way. Oh. It was a weird thing where... And I have this with with people people and often I've never met. You're in Ghostbusters, mm. and I've never met you. I was so proud of you when you appeared. <laughs> I'm like, there he is, there yeah. he is, there he is. It's like amazing. he's one of our own. You know, never. He's like James A. A. in Ghostbusters. A. Yeah, it was definitely That's that incredible. vibe. My friend Nathaniel went to see it at the cinema, and there was a a, a mum with her of her son watching it in front of him and apparently when I came on the screen uh, the son went to his mum is that James A. Caster and she went yeah it's Maddie's in this <laughs> <laughs> well I, I saw it in the cinema and weirdly Rufus Hound was sat next to me and he went James, James Lancaster <laughs> James Lancaster I, uh, there, coming I, got, on. I got him yeah. going in his career I helped him he probably won't time. be very good let's give him a round of applause <laughs> yeah yeah here he is <laughs> um, lovely to see you. Have a great Christmas. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Merry and now, Christmas. And now you're friends of the show. You can come back anytime. Anytime. I'll be popping in whenever. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And your tree will be delivered this afternoon. Thank way. you so much, yeah. guys. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. James Acaster. Thank you. Radio X.